Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Fit You Podcast. My name is Dakota Phillips. I'm the head coach and owner of Fit You Coaching. My goal is always to help you have a more fun and uh, enjoyable fitness experience. And I'm Savannah Phillips, the official co-host of this podcast. And today we're going to be talking about Steel Mace. So you've probably heard us talking about Steel Mace quite a bit if you've listened to any of our previous podcasts or if you've been to the website or followed me on social media. You've seen me using a Steel Mace or heard us talking about it. So today we want to dive in and kind of explain what a Steel Mace is in case you're listening and you have no idea what we're talking about. We just found out the other day that your sister's boyfriend had no idea that I did Steel Mace even though I've been doing it for years and it's like my main job. He thought it was like some acronym for something. And <laughs> sorry, Jordan, calling you out a little bit, but come on. That's man. what happens. <laughs> so let's get into it. What is a steel mace? So a steel mace, if you have not seen one, typically it's it says it's a steel mace, but it's made out of iron or I don't, I don't know if it's actually steel, but um, it's a pole with a big globe on the end of it. So think like medieval times you would see somebody using a mace is probably like a skinnier handle with a ball of spikes. The ones we're using don't have spikes on them. Uh, it's a little bit thicker of a handle, a little bit longer of a handle. Um, I think it maybe started in India, something like that. They use like gatas, clubs, like things like that, that are similar to a steel mace. Um, typically the weight is mostly in that globe at the end of the handle. The fives and seven pound maces are a little bit shorter. Tens and anything heavier than a 10 is going to be pretty much the same length. It's just that globe is going to get bigger the heavier your mace gets. Um, and then with that globe being the heavier spot, it's a little bit different than a barbell or a dumbbell that's evenly distributed with that weight. Because you think about when you pick up a dumbbell, it's usually got like two circles on the sides and that's where the weight is. With the globe, it's all off to one side and it's off on a pretty long handle. So you've got that like asymmetrical weighting of your like tool. So how do you use a mace then? Like what is the benefit of it being asymmetrical? Um, so one of the biggest benefits to it being asymmetrical is it's going to use your core in a little bit different way than um, just using a regular barbell because I mean, you do have to brace your core if you're doing like squats and the weight is evenly distributed, but you have to brace in a different way because the weight is all off to one side. So it's going to want to try to pull you over there. You have to kind of fight that urge to resist that weight and you're not falling over. So you have to brace a little bit differently. You're going to use one side of your core a little bit more, um, different stabilization. And then when you're like holding the handle and swinging the mace around um, because typically I use a seven pound mace or a 10 pound mace. I don't go too much heavier than that um, because once you start swinging a 10 pound mace around um, holding it at the end of the handle that like, I don't know the math and I'm sure there's some equation you could do that um, with that globe being farther away from where you're holding it and picking up speed in the swing that 10 pounds ends up feeling a lot heavier than 10 pounds because you think about a 10 pound dumbbell, probably pretty light for most people, but a 10 pound mace is heavy enough for most people. Mm -hmm. So uh, the asymmetrical part and the movements that you do with it can make it feel a lot heavier than it actually is. And more of the core exercise that you're doing with it is often resisting the urge to contract or bend and like keeping yourself stable versus like the opposite of which would be like doing crunches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think, I mean, if you think about doing core exercise, typically somebody's going to think about doing sit ups or crunches. Um, and that's really only working flexion. Um, and you don't do flexion super often in life like maybe you do it when you sit up to get out of bed um and maybe a few other times but really not too often um but the mace is going to give you those different like rotational core exercises which like you kind of think about doing russian twists but this is even more so than that because like you said you're doing something that's resisting wanting to pull you over because you're not in a balanced weight 
Which is basically what you do all day long, standing up and moving around. Mm -hmm. You're trying not to act like a rag doll. Right. And then also like the opposite of being a rag doll. You've seen, I, I don't know, I just watched the other day on TikTok. Somebody was doing like, if we lived life the way we're supposed to like do gym movements where you'd like go down to like get oh, a yeah. DVD out of the um, entertainment center and you like do a full squat, feet perfectly set up, back is straight, chest is up, or you go to like move something and put it on a shelf you're not going to really set yourself up in those like quote unquote like perfect lifting standards you're going to just live your life and move objects um, and i think the mace translates well for that because you're like i said you're doing things in an off balanced way you're going to carry in your groceries when i carry in groceries i put them almost all in one hand i carry them in so i have a hand free to open the door that's not balanced, but it's functional because that's how I'm going to live my life. Yeah, very functional. So why do you like using the steel mace? So I found the steel mace because I mostly just kind of got bored with typical gym workouts. Um, like I used to have somebody, to, like I would either go work out with my dad or best friend, you, um, towards the end of college, didn't really have a workout buddy kind of got bored with uh, regular gym workouts and then I wanted something different and that was where I found the steel mace because there's so many different movements that you do with that that you don't see with other um, objects like a barbell or dumbbells and then it also has a really cool like creative aspect to it that I mean you can get creative with your workouts when you're doing like your typical gym workouts like there's tons of machines dumbbells lots of exercises you can choose from you're just kind of choosing in like up and down push and pull things like that um but with a steel mace it kind of adds like it like combines dancing and sword fighting and martial arts and weightlifting all into one thing that kind of keeps you learning you're never going to like become a master of steel mace like you could always get better at steel mace which i get you could also get better at like squatting you can get heavier but you can but that really is like the only benchmark is mm -hmm. am I lifting more? Right. Like am I or more reps or more weight or Yeah, or faster. But with a steel mace, it's like you could try to move in a certain way, put different movements together, try to smooth out those transitions, make it look more fluid. Um, Get more control. More control. You could go up and wait with a steel mace. I like to just stay with a ten and focus more on the movement and then like you can still put effort into those movements to make that weight feel heavier. Do you feel like there's like more opportunities then to feel accomplished using it? Like you learn a new move or a new combination. And so like every time you pick it up, you could technically do something new and feel like challenged and capable and confident about it versus like, I don't know. I mean, I haven't done a lot of consistent lifting for a while, but with something like weightlifting, I feel like you go through big periods of time where you're just going in and you're doing the same or very similar weights and reps and everything as you grow. And it takes a while to make a big accomplishment. I definitely think so because like you said with, or a personal best, I guess. Yeah. Like with the mace, you can practice on like movement quality and like the aesthetic of like how it looks and smoothing everything out even if you're practicing the same movement that you've practiced for a while, you can practice adding in just like a small little flow, like do this move plus this move. Okay, I've got that down. Now what if I did that same first movement with a different second movement and try to figure out how am I going to get that to look How to transition. Have a good transition. Can I make it be on both sides even? Um, so you can play around with those different aspects there where like you said, with a squat, like, yeah, you can keep growing, but it's, I don't know, it's not as fun. And like, even when I coach steel mace for like, I coach both steel mace and weightlifting stuff. I feel like I still try to make workouts fun when we're doing weightlifting and people will be like, yes, that was a great workout. I had fun. They smile, they leave. But with the steel mace, those workouts, I feel like you get more people like that you you see them like have to think a little bit harder because it's a new movement and you're trying to like do it smoothly 
but then it's like challenging your mind a lot more exactly you're getting a lot more like mind and body connection there but then when they leave it's like class is over they're smiling until they get out the door and like you could tell that they had fun it wasn't like oh i just accomplished a hard workout because that's fun too but this was like that whole class was actually fun there was also challenge to it and i just had a ton of fun so that brings up another question for me though is if you're having a whole bunch of fun with it what what are you going to feel like at the end of a steel mace workout? Like, are you going to feel sweaty and all your muscles are like jelly or just a little bit more mentally tired? Um, yeah. Give me, give me an idea of what a good steel mace workout will leave you feeling. So you could feel almost anything. I mean, you can go several different ways. So like with flow, the way I use a steel mace and the way I coach it most, um, there's ways that you could make it so that after the workout, you've got those jelly legs and you're going to be sore tomorrow. Um, but then there's also ways that you can just combine lots of different movements and you're focusing more on, like we said, the quality and the like looking smooth. Um, that's probably going to leave you a little less sore. Um, but even still, like the other day when I was practicing like one of the new sword movements and I sent you a video to kind of like check to see if I was doing it like evenly on both arms I didn't realize how long I was practicing that. And then the next day my shoulders were ended up being really sore. And I was like, Oh yeah, that makes sense because I just did that same movement over and over for like a half hour without actually realizing it because I was having fun practicing a movement, but that's a lot of time on my shoulders to be doing one movement. So you can be sore. And then especially when you get into hard style where it's like you're using heavier maces, like twenties, thirties, forties, that's a lot more like weightlifting style where, that one you're going to get kind of that typical like I'm sore the next day feeling or you can but that's a different kind like that's not going to be flow kind of workout yeah so that that's like the two camps of I mean I don't know two camps that makes it seem like there's two teams but like you can do more flow like I do more lighter weights focused on like more like the aesthetic and the transition hard style is like more similar to weightlifting where you're trying to increase the weight of your um, steel mace and doing like steel mace movements like 360s and mills and um, but still like taking that. advantage of the asymmetric yes part of the mace correct like the the yeah. balance required yeah there's and there's less movements you can do with the hard style just because like when i flip a 10 pound mace i can do that pretty comfortably i can flip it behind my back i'm not going to be flipping a 40 pound mace ever so you kind of have some limitations when you start getting heavier Okay. Um, uh, With that, I mean, you've kind of talked about the different weights and what you're going to do with each. So what would you recommend people get when starting out? So it'll depend a little bit on like your experience with using weights and kind of your body type. Because for me, I use a 10 pound mace probably 85% of the time. I use a seven pound mace, whatever, almost the rest of that percentage is. And then I'll use a 20 pound mace, maybe like 10% of the time, maybe less. Um, So I think a 10 pound mace is like the gold standard of flow. So if you want to get really good at flow and um, do things like that, I would recommend a 10 pound mace because it also has the best balance out of any of the maces, I think, Um, just with the weight of the handle and the weight of the globe, uh, make it easier to do a lot of the flow movements. However, I also think a seven pound mace is really helpful. Like I said, I use that and I use that when I'm learning new movements. So if there's something I'm not comfortable with, like I said, those flips behind your back, maybe you don't want to do that with a 10 pound mace. You want to start a little bit lighter. Um, That's nice. It's a nice movement or a nice mace to use for like one arm things. Um, And then also if you're like, so I think of Shoko who does mace with me um, online and she's shorter than five feet. So like a 10 pound mace is pretty long for her and it's pretty heavy because she's I mean she's done tons of classes with me but she's still newer to exercising um so a seven pound mace is kind of her gold standard but then when we do like those heavier movements then she'll use a 10 pound mace but she flows a lot better with a seven so if you're brand new to exercise or it's been a long time since you've worked out maybe start with a seven if you're a taller person um the 10 is nice because the handle's a little bit longer like i said 
the seven can kind of feel a little bit cramped when you start doing some movements. Um, but then if you're like, I'm a big, strong person, I lift weights all the time and I want to lift heavy still with a mace because you can do that. Um, I would still recommend starting with a 10 and then going up from there because like I said, when you start swinging that mace around, it's going to feel a lot heavier. So even though you can maybe handle a 20 pound mace or heavier, I would say start with a 10, understand what you're doing, get the form down because like I've seen some people when we do like crown killers where it's like you hold the mace in front of you, bring it behind your head and then pull it back over. If you're not doing that in control, the mace is going to come back and smack you in the back. That's not going to feel good. You don't want that. Start lighter and then build yourself up. Sounds good. Uh, I think that about covers everything, all the questions that I can think of for mace. Uh, if people want to do mace with you, what do you offer? Uh, so we've got online courses. So if you're somebody who wants to kind of learn all of the movements that you need to be a beginner in flow. We've got Steel Mace 101, 102, and 103. And you can also buy that bundle, save a little bit of money by getting all three. Uh, and that'll be like online course videos of me explaining all the movements, giving you the breakdowns, showing you how to do it. And then there's also one-on-one -on -one coaching. So you can get personal training with me. I'll walk you through everything. It's a little bit more hands-on because like I'm seeing you do those movements I can give you those cues that you need um, whereas the courses are kind of you have to figure out what you need based off the movement to replicate um, and then there's also the group coaching so if you're somebody who already knows what you're doing with a mace then you could join the group coaching and then that will kind of give you those workouts to do with a steel mace and body weight we mix them together um, and then that'll also come with those courses too so even if you don't necessarily know steel mace too well you can sign up for the group coaching get the courses and then you can do kind of like a side by side of doing the courses and working them into your workouts and being a part of the membership is still good too because like you can give kind of some of those tips and tricks um but yeah it won't be specifically for you but yeah you can go through the courses get those weekly workouts and be a part of the membership be a part of the group and mm -hmm interact with everybody have a good time yeah so if you want to learn more about all of that www.fityoucoaching.com that main page has options for coaching calls with Dakota or you can go to the store page and look into the options that we have we also have um, an affiliate link to get your own steel mace from there as well mm -hmm. so, yeah until next time have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.